tonight on Y News. The latest Pulse Asia survey shows Filipinos want President Rodrigo Duterte to tackle issues on inflation, jobs, and China in his fourth State of the Nation address on Monday. The Department of Justice forms a prosecution panel to handle the criminal complaints filed against Vice President Lenny Robredo and several others over Bicoy videos. Supreme Court Chief Justice Lucas Bersamin calls United Nations Rights Council's adoption of a resolution seeking to probe the Philippines' human rights situation a minority resolution. The Bureau of Animal Industry says 34 samples of pork products tested positive for African swine fever virus. And the Banco Central ng Pilipinas says the country's inflation has slowed down as food prices continue to fall. Good evening. Workers' pay, inflation, and jobs have topped the list of issues that Filipinos would like President Rodrigo Duterte to tackle during his fourth State of the Nation address on July 22. A survey conducted by Pulse Asia Research Incorporated revealed Friday. The survey, conducted from June 24 to 30, showed that 17.1% of 1,200 respondents said they want to hear Duterte talk about workers' salaries, while another 17.1% wanted him to discuss about plans in reducing the prices of basic commodities. Meanwhile, 15.2% of the respondents said they would like to hear Duterte's accomplishments and plans on generating more jobs or livelihood opportunities. Other topics Filipinos want the president to mention in his speech on Monday are the issues surrounding the relations between the Philippines and China, particularly the assertion of Philippine sovereignty in the West Philippine Sea and the country's policy in relation to China. Some 7.8% of the respondents also want to hear about the government's war on drugs during Duterte's SONA. 5.9% want him to discuss about improving the agricultural sector, while 2.6% said they want pension increase to be tackled. The pollster said it has 95% confidence level in the survey results with an error of mar margin of error, margin of positive over negative 2.8%. Senators have filed their pet or priority bills for the upcoming 18th Congress, but they also want to hear what President Rodrigo Duterte will prioritize in the next three years remaining in his term. Find those out as Nel Maribohok reports. Senator Joel Villanueva is hopeful that President Rodrigo Duterte will tackle the issue on the welfare of workers as the country's top leader delivers his fourth State of the Nation address on Monday, July 22, particularly the enactment of the Security of Tenure Bill or End Endo Bill. Senator Villanueva also wants the issue on illegal foreign workers to be included in the President's SONA. Senator Rizon Tiveros awaits the President's statement on the West Philippine Sea issue, citing the Philippines' victory against China's environmentally destructive activities in the disputed waters as ruled by the Permanent Court of Arbitration. Wish ko lang na sasabihin ni Presidente na sa wakas, after three years, i-cha-champion na niya, itataguyod yung tagumpay natin vis-a-vis uh, -vis China sa West Philippines. Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel meanwhile wants to hear the president's priority bills. His uh, priorities for one year, at least mm -hmm. one year, and then priorities na for the last, uh, for the second half of his term. For Senator Sani Agara, President Duterte is fulfilling his promise to rid the country of the scourge of illegal drugs. He has also expressed contentment with President Duterte's performance for the last three years, saying the administration is on track in its infrastructure projects. In the President's fourth SONA, Senator Angara wants to hear the Duterte administration's plan for the upcoming years. This include the 10-year development plan laid out in the 2020 budget. The lawmaker also awaits the announcement of the promised salary hike for public teachers as well as additional jobs for Filipinos. 
Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Davao City Representative Paolo Duterte accepts the position as Deputy Speaker for Political Affairs offered by Taguig Patero's Representative Alan Peter Cayetano. Congressman Cayetano thanks the presidential son, saying they have talked about what the country needs for a very responsive Congress. President Rodrigo Duterte has endorsed Congressman Cayetano to be the Speaker of the Lower House of Congress for 15 months, sharing term with Marinduque Representative Lord Alan Velasco. Reports have surfaced there will be an imminent revamp among the cabinet members of President Rodrigo Duterte, but the presidential spokesperson himself says the palace is unaware of such a revamp. Rosalie Gos explains why. President Rodrigo Duterte has recently confirmed that Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARMM Interim Chief Minister Alhaj Murad Ibrahim had already agreed on the appointment of Agriculture Secretary Emmanuel Piñol as the Chief of the Mindanao Development Authority or MINDA and point person of the national government in BARMM. After this, reports have also surfaced that there will be a revamp among the Chief Executive's Cabinet members. Broadcaster Erwin Tulfo has been reported to be the next Presidential Communications Secretary, while Secretary Martin Andanar will be allegedly the next Presidential Political Advisor or the point person of the President in Northern Mindanao. However, a UNTV News & Rescue source person in Malacanang denies these reports. The source person adds that so far, the chief executive has not decided if there will indeed be a cabinet revamp or major changes in his cabinet. President Duterte's recent statement about the issue is that he is currently scouting for a military man that will replace Agriculture Secretary Piñol. Meanwhile, Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Salvador Panelo clarifies the palace is unaware of any cabinet revamp. Hindi, wala, wala siyang, never siya nagbanggit tungkol na. Pero meron nga mga minor changes sa cabinet. Hindi ko alam. Siyempre nagsabi meron. Rosa Licoz, UNTV, News and Rescue, Malacanã. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara, Guevara has created a three-member panel that will handle the string of criminal complaints filed by the Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group against Vice President Lenny Robredo and other personalities. But respondents in the case call the complaints trash, baseless harassment, and persecution. Maya Bermudez will tell us why. As Senator Laila de Lima attended the trial on her drug-related case today at the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court Branch 205, the lawmaker slammed new accusations against her. Senator de Lima is among the respondents on complaints filed yesterday by the Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group or PNPCIDG represented by Police Lieutenant Colonel Arnold Tomas Ibay in connection with the revelations made by Peter Jomel Advincula alias Bicoy. Hagwash. Pure hagwash. Basura. Mas basura pa yan siguro sa mga sinampang kaso kaysa sa akin. The credibility ni Bicoy is already down the drain. Wala nang Wala na, siya yung kriminal eh. Siya yung umami na kriminal eh. Tapos siya yung ginagamit ngayon ng CIDG laban sa mga, mga taong ti, tingin nila ay kumakalaban sa administrasyon. Another respondent in the case, Senator Antonio Trillanes IV calls the move as persecution and harassment done by the Duterte administration. Attorney Chel Jokno says it seems that the case is being manipulated. And it seems that the administration is excited to charge them even without a basis or evidence. The vice president's camp has not formally received any copies of the complaint, but says that since it came from Bicoy, they are sure this is baseless and is just a form of harassment. Senator Risa Honteveros, meanwhile, describes Bicoy's statement as scripted and poorly written. It puzzles her that the complaint was filed days before SONA and asks if this is a way to misdirect the attention of the public from the real issue. Malacanang, for their part, denies hand over the sedition complaints filed by the Philippine National Police against Vice President Lenny Robredo and others, linking them to the controversial Ang Totoong Narco List videos of Bicoy, which accused President Rodrigo Duterte and some of his family members of illegal drug links. 
This is the response of presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo when asked if the cases filed are part of a crackdown of the Duterte administration against the opposition. The official also said if the government is implementing repressive measures against the critics and the opposition, they should have filed cases long before because of the defamations against the chief executive. He also appealed to the critics to let the judicial process take its course. We have nothing to do with a complaint against the VP and other senators. That's basically a complaint of Bicoy, right? We have nothing to do about it. And we will just let the law take its course. Meanwhile, Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara creates a panel of state prosecutors to hear the complaint and conduct the requisite preliminary investigation on charges of sedition, inciting to sedition, cyber libel, libel, staffa, harboring a criminal, and obstruction of justice charges against at least 37 individuals, including Vice President Lenny Robredo. The DOG assures they will exert the full force of the law to secure a conviction. My Bermuda, Zeman TV News and Rescue, Muntinlu, Pasig. The Bureau of Animal Industry tests tens of samples positive for African swine fever virus. The Philippines' ban on pork importation now covers 19 countries. Ray Palayo tells us why. These pictures show pork products confiscated by the Bureau of Customs or BOC at the Nino Aquino International Airport from June 19 to 28 this year. These products are from Hong Kong and China but have no sanitary and phytosanitary clearance from the Bureau of Animal Industry or BAE. China is one of the countries that the Philippines has imposed an import ban due to the African swine fever or ASF outbreak. Out of almost 400 samples from the confiscated items, 34 tested positive for ASF virus. This means that if they had not been intercepted, they could have infected local hogs. Another country has just been added to the list of countries the Philippines has imposed an import ban on. Although no ASF outbreak has been recorded yet in Germany, the Philippines prohibits the entry of pork products from the Western European country. Germany is considered as those contagious of Poland, which is one of the countries with the ASF outbreak. A German company has shipped pork to the Philippines, 250 kilograms of which is from Poland. The shipment was intercepted last June 27. According to Agriculture Secretary Manny Pignol, the German company committed a serious violation of the quarantine law. Please, no? Uh, please understand, these are extraordinary times. We cannot take the risk. Kasi tingnan mo, Germany na napaka-respectable na bansa niyan. It's an export uh, country, no? known for its high standards. Nasingitan tayo. ASF endangers the 260 billion peso worth of local hog industry. Countries with ASF outbreak near the Philippines are Cambodia and Vietnam. There is a 100% mortality rate once a hog is infected, and there is no treatment discovered against ASF today. In May, the Food and Drug Administration ordered the recall of food products from countries infected by ASF with manufacturing date on their label after the import ban was imposed. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. The new low pressure area or LPA monitored north of the country has developed into a tropical depression and has been named Goring. As of 4 p.m. today, State Weather Service Pagasa monitored the weather disturbance at 380 kilometers north northeast of Basco Batanes and is moving northeast at a speed of 30 kph with maximum sustained winds of 45 kilometers per hour near the center and gusts up to 60 kph tropical cyclone wind signal number one is now hoisted over Batanes. Goring may exit the Philippine area of responsibility on Friday evening or early morning Saturday. Meanwhile, State Weather Bureau Pagasa issued a special weather outlook for Monday on the occasion of President Rodrigo Duterte's fourth State of the Nation address. According to Pagasa, Metro Manila will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies 
throughout the day on Monday with high possibility of thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening, which may bring rain showers over the area, including Quezon City, where the President's Sona will take place at Batasan, Pambansa. Temperature on Monday would be between 26 to 33 degrees Celsius. Pagasa assured to issue updates as soon as significant changes in the weather pattern for Monday's event occur. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Baltazar and here are the headlines. Banco Central ng Pilipinas believes the country's inflation will ease further as food prices continue to drop. Several municipalities in Zamboanga, Sibugay, now under state of calamity amid rising number of dengue cases. The Department of Trade and Industry inspects three steel bar manufacturers in the cities of Valenzuela and Caloocan. A body believed to be one of two missing Filipinos in Thailand has been found by authorities. And take a look at the changes implemented in the city of Manila this week. Good evening. Some local government units in the province of Samwanga, Sibugay have declared a state of calamity. The Department of Health Region 9 assured they are ready to help prevent a further increase in the number of dengue cases in the Zamwanga Peninsula. Dante Amendo tells us why. Several municipalities in Zamwanga, Sibugay, a province in the Zamwanga Peninsula, Mindanao, have declared a state of calamity after recording a ballooning number of dengue cases. This is to allow the local government units to use their calamity funds to fight the mosquito-borne viral disease and prevent further spread of dengue virus among residents. Those municipalities include Ipil, Cabasalan, Buog, and Diplahan. To um, address the, the current situation, like um, the, if they want to purchase more um, commodities for integrated vector management, like yung ating mga larvicides, yung ating mga spray cans for misting, and other commodities na ginagamit for dengue outbreak. The Department of Health or DOH Region 9 say they continue to assess the measures of LGUs and provide their needs. I-evaluate namin yung ginawa ba nilang action, may effect ba? I-evaluate natin or kung ano pa yung kulang, ano pa yung pwedeng technical assistance na kakailanganan nila from us. Data from the Department of Health or DOH Region 9 show over 9,000 suspected dengue cases with 32 recorded deaths in the entire region. Most of the patients are 1 to 11 years old. Zamboanga City has the highest number of cases with over 3,000. Zamboanga Sibugay Province follows with more than 2,800. Zamboanga City also has the most number of recorded deaths due to dengue with 19, 6 in April, Zamboanga Sibugay, 4 in Dipolog City, Zamboanga del Norte, and 3 in Isabela Basilan. The DOH admit that hospitals in the region, particularly public hospitals, are congested already. But the health department assured they have enough medicines for the patients. They appeal for a responsible community and barangay to work hand-in-hand hand to prevent further spread of the often fatal disease. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Zamboanga City. The Department of Trade and Industry conducted an inspection on three huge steel bar manufacturing companies in Valenzuela and Caloocan City today. The DTI wants to ascertain if substandard steel bars are produced in these firms. Joe Anano tells us why. To assure the quality of steel bars manufactured and sold to consumers in accordance with the regulations set by the Bureau of Philippine Standards, the Department of Trade and Industry made a surprise inspection on three steel bar manufacturing companies in Valenzuela and Caloocan cities. These are Maxima Steel, Dragon Steel Asia, and Metro Dragon Steel Corporation. The inspection comes after the DTI received several reports that this firm produced substandard steel. The DTI took some samples, which they will examine to determine if the steel bars meet the standards set by authorities. Uh, it test yan ng papa test ng BPS a third party testing uh, company testing lab para meserili tayong resulta. Kung, kung sakaling may violation man, makapag-comply sila, makorekt nila at makuha natin yung mga substandard products para hindi na mapili ng consumer. 
The DTI again reminds consumers to be wiser and thoroughly examine steel bars before purchasing. The DTI explains that the steel grade and size must be apparent as well as the manufacturer's logo. Uh, kailangan unang-una siyempre yung markings, yung labeling niya. Nakalagay yung steel grade, nakalagay yung logo ng kumpanya na nagmamanufacture, nakalagay ang size. So dapat yun, unang-una, pag wala nun, pag unbranded yung bakal, ibig sabihin hindi yan dumaan sa proseso ng DTI kasi requirement natin na lahat marked, may labeled siya lahat. So, pagka-labeled na, o nakita natin na may label, doon na rin tayo bumili sa reputable na hardware. The DTI aims for the public to be sure of the quality of steel products they buy and use to avoid possible accidents like that when a chosen supermarket branch in Porak, Pampanga collapsed after a 6.1 magnitude earthquake hit last April. The DTI warns that hardware stores, dealers, and manufacturers of steel bars may be closed or imposed with honor penalties once they are proved to be selling or manufacturing substandard steel bars. Joanna, UNTV News and Rescue, Valenzuela City. Officials and employees of the Bureau of Costumes who are tagged in corruption allegations will face administrative charges before the office of the Ombudsman. On Thursday night, President Rodrigo Duterte met with dozens of customs personnel in Malacanang. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said President Duterte told them they will be given their day in court as part of the due process. While waiting for the formal filing of charges, the said customs officials will be in floating status without authority to act on official matters. The chief executive earlier ordered for the freezing of several high-ranking customs officials who were accused of corrupt practices in office. Banco Central ng Pilipinas announces the country's headline inflation during the second quarter of the year slowed down to 3%. The BSP says a huge part of the slowdown was caused by the easing rice prices in the market and continues arrival of rice imports. Here's why from Harleen Delgado. We caught Griselda buying in a market here in Manila. A mother of seven, Criselda says, the slight drop in market prices is a big help for her family. Kasi sa dami nung bilang ng pamilya ko eh, ano, malaking tulog hindi siya. Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP announced today the country's headline inflation for the second quarter of 2019 has slowed down to 3.0%. This is lower compared with 3.8% headline inflation in the first quarter of the year and the 5.9% recorded in the last quarter of 2018. The BSP says a huge part of the slower food inflation was brought by the decline in rice prices with the ongoing harvest season and continuous arrival of rice imports. Other large weighted foods that registered slow price increases include meat, fish, milk, cheese, and eggs. The BSP adds the said inflation is within the government's inflation target range of 2% to 4% for this year, as well as the BSP's forecast of 2.7% to 3.5%. However, the key upside risks to inflation are seen to come from the adverse effects of higher electricity rates, transport fare adjustments, Proposed adjustments in excise taxes on cigarettes and alcoholic beverages, prolonged weak El Nino episode, and the volatile global crude oil prices. An economist believes that the inflation slowdown will continue, noting the further decline of rice prices as an effect of the rice tarification law. We have yet to see the full effects of the rice tarification law. That, definitely that would help further uh, ease food prices because and we have seen the strengthening of the peso that could uh, the best in 17 months here in paco public market in manila rice prices are also decreasing the price of local well-milled rice has gone down by two to four pesos from the previous 44 pesos per kilogram this is the same with the latest data gathered by the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA, noting that the retail price of well-milled rice has gone down to 42.92 pesos per kilo from 44.37 pesos per kilogram last year. Meron pong bumaba, meron pong dalawang piso, may tatlong piso, depende po kasi sa klase ng bigas. Banco Central ng Pilipinas also expects that the downward trend will continue. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. 
Chief Justice Lucas Bersamin called the United Nations Human Rights Council or UNHRC adoption of a resolution to probe human rights situation in the country as minority since only 18 countries voted for it. Though his statement was brief, Bersamin said other countries have no reason to intervene with Philippine affairs, especially its policies. Mukhang eh, tama nga naman sila Secretary Panelo dahil eh, minority resolution lang yan. But you know, I am a member of the judiciary. Kailangan ipilit kong sabihin sa ngayon, uh, wala naman kaming nakikitang uh, dapat lamang na manghimasok ang tiga ibang bansa. The palace previously called the resolution an insult to the Filipinos. The Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, however, clarified that the Philippines will not cut its ties with any member of the human rights body. The Quezon City Police District will implement road closure and traffic rerouting scheme on Monday, July 22, in line with President Rodrigo Duterte's fourth State of the Nation address. Nina Armilio explains why. In an advisory, Police Brigadier General Joselito Esquivel said motorists flying Batasan area will have to take alternate route on Monday due to the expected heavy traffic near the Batasang Pamansa complex where the president will deliver his speech. The local government of Quezon City also announced the suspension of classes for Monday. The Quezon City Police District said that closure and traffic rerouting plan will be implemented in the following roads. Starting 12 a.m. on July 22, the entire stretch of Commonwealth Avenue north and southbound from Quezon Memorial Circle, Filcoa, to Fairview will be cleared and illegally parked vehicles will be towed. Commonwealth Avenue northbound shall be partially closed from Home Depot to the Sandigan Bayan U-turn slot. Southbound lanes of Commonwealth will remain open. Eastbound of IBP starting full invest 1 up to Sinagtala will be closed for traffic to give way to pro-administration rallyists and demonstrators. At 6 a.m., motorists coming from QMC to Fairview shall take zipper lane at the Island Breaker in front of Home Depot U-turn slot and take inner lanes. The end and exit point of the zipper lane is at the Island Breaker of the Sandigan Bayan U-turn slot. Likewise, motorists coming from Fairview to QMC shall traverse the usual southbound route. At 2.30 p.m., Light vehicles from QMC to Fairview may take North Avenue, turn right to Mindanao Avenue, turn right to Old Sawia Road, turn left to Chestnut Street, turn right to Dahlia Street, turn left to Fairlane Street, then exit to Commonwealth Avenue to destination. Heavy vehicles should take Commonwealth Avenue. Light vehicles may also take right turn to Regalado Avenue, right turn to Old Sawia Road, turn right to Mindanao Avenue. Take a U-turn at Carino Highway to Mindanao Avenue and southbound left turn North Avenue to QMC to destination. For vehicles along QMC, they may take right turn to North Avenue, right turn to Mindanao Avenue, right turn to Old Sauya Road or Carino Highway to destination. At 4 p.m., the entire stretch of IBP Road may be locked down for traffic. All light vehicles will take alternate route from QMC to Phil Invest 1 and 2. Barangay Bagong Silang and some inner portions of Barangay Batasan Hills shall take zipper lane at the Island Breaker in front of the Home Depot U-turn slot and take inner lanes. The end of the zipper lane is at the Breaker of Sandigan Bayan U-turn slot. Then right turn on Litex Payatas Road, right turn on Abri Street, right turn on Vugain Villa Street, right turn to Lower Hasmin Street, right turn to Ilang Ilang Street, left turn to Santan Street, left to Sampagita Street, Left turn to Via Lago Road and meters away, right turn and enter the gate 3 of Philinvest 2 to Barangay Bagong Silang just follow Via Lago Road for those traveling to Philinvest 1. Motorists should have an agreement with Philinvest 2. In order to pass by their subdivision to reach the Batasan San Mateo Road, then enter Kagawad Street, right turn to Resolution Street, right turn to Senatorial Street, right turn to Sinagtala Street, Left turn to Masbate or Cotabato Street, left turn to Philinvest 1 Road, and enter gate of Philinvest 1 Subdivision. Light vehicles going to Philinvest 2, San Mateo Rizal, and Marquina City may take alternate route from Commonwealth Sandigan. Turn right on Sinagtala Street, turn right on Senatorial Street, turn left on Resolution Street, left turn on Kagawad Road, then right turn on Batasan San Mateo Road. The QCPD estimates that by 6 p.m., 
only the westbound lane of IBP Road leading to the Sandigan Bayan underpass or tunnel shall be open to VIPs exiting from the south gate of the HOR going to Commonwealth Avenue. However, the westbound lane from Litex to the HOR south gate will remain closed until further notice. Nino Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. The Manila City Government begins its cleaning operations at Vita Slaughterhouse in Tondo, Manila to pave way for the rehabilitation of the facility. April Sendoza tells us why. Foul smell coming from Vita Slaughterhouse in Tondo, Manila greeted Manila Mayor Isko Moreno on Friday morning. The local chief executive led the cleanup drive at the filthy meat facility as part of its rehabilitation. Animal waste and other debris were removed. It can be seen that tons of garbage was cleared using a bulldozer. During his inspection on Wednesday, the mayor mentioned the facility has no sewage treatment plant and proper cleaning equipment. He explained that waste coming from the facility flows to Manila Bay, which is also being rehabilitated by the government. Mayor Isko also pointed out there is no office for Manila Veterinary Inspection Board. Following this, he vows the new slaughterhouse will be operational by next year and that personnel from the veterinary office will also be able to live there. Meanwhile, the city government is looking into the legality of a cockpit arena in the said facility. Pag sila legal, okay lang. Pag sila meron kami nakitang illegal doon sa kontrata, eh, pag-aaralan namin sila na hindi namin, hindi namin interest yan eh. Mm -hmm. Itong pasilidad na ito, interest ito, public service eh. April Senedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Striking improvements in the city of Manila catch the eyes and ears of not only the city residents but also onlookers. Let's find out what new changes the city has this week as Mon Hock Son reports. A traffic monster free divisoria, a clean and manure free Bonifacio shrine. Mayor Isko Moreno has been leading the city towards a new Manila through various cleaning and clearing operations this past few weeks. And this is the third week Mayor Isko has shown his constituents that indeed they can tread together towards a new and improved city. Let's go back to one of the busiest underpasses in Manila, the one near the City Hall. I visited this underpass before when I made a story about Metro Manila walkways. Before, pedestrians could not walk conveniently here because of the crowded underpass with seemingly never-ending stalls of vendors. After Mayor Isko ordered the cleaning of this underpass, this is what it looks like now. It is more spacious, more pleasing to look at, cleaner, plus the vendors are gone. Mas malinis na po, tsaka mas classy na tignan. May mga ilaw po kasi kami nakita doon eh, parang lakas maka BGC. O mas mas lumuwag po, tsaka nabawasan po yung init. Ah, maayos na ngayon. Maluwag na nakakadaan ng maayos yung mga tao. Even vloggers from other countries are enticed to vlog the improvements in the city. One of them is Basil, who is now living in the Philippines. Of course, before I think it's more crowded. Marami tao dito. Tapos, uh, it's really hard to pass because there are also a lot of people selling stuff. So now, Nayon, of course, in such a short time, we can see Mayor Esco here. There's a lot of changes happen in Manila, which is very, very good thing. But one of the most challenging endeavors is cleaning the many estuaries in the city. Garbage that clogs these foul ditches causes flooding whenever there is a downpour. Last year, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, together with barangay officials, cleaned Estero de Binondo. Now, Estero de Binondo is the cleanest estuary in Manila City. In preparation for the rainy season, the Manila City government is conducting dredging operations to make Estero de Binondo deeper. The city administration also plans to transfer people living beside the estuary to a relocation site. Gotham. Gotham yun, walang hanap buhay doon. Habalik kami sa Manila para maghanap buhay. Naano na kami, na-relocate na kami. 
Ah, so, ba't ba't nandito pa rin po kayo? Eh, siyempre, nandito hanap boy namin. Last Wednesday, British Ambassador Daniel Pruce offered to help Manila in its urban planning efforts. Ambassador Pruce has invited Mayor Isco to the University of Oxford in London to discuss the plan. Manileños are hoping for all these improvements to last long. A new Manila is indeed attainable if the government and residents work hand in hand. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue Manila. And to complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. Thailand authorities have retrieved a body who they believe is one of the two Filipinos reported missing in a beach in Phuket, Thailand on Wednesday. From Bangkok, Thailand, Kath Dumaraos will tell us why live. Yes, uh, Kath, good evening. Good evening. Yes, good evening, William. A body believed to be one of the two missing Filipinos has been found on the Freedom Beach in Phuket, Thailand earlier today, July 19. Police Major Ekachai City of Tourist Police Division 3 in the resort island said on Friday, after being informed about the body, police started investigating and assumed it was one of the two Filipinos who remained missing. Initially, four Filipinos were reported missing on the beach on Wednesday evening, but two have been found and the other two remain missing. Authorities identified the two missing persons as Noah Ibai, 40 years old, and Angelo Bien Rafael Cortez, 29 years old. The four were with a group of 13 Filipino men who swam at the beach on Wednesday. The search operations by authorities and rescue workers from Kusodham Phuket Foundation and Patong Bay Watch for the two others have been impeded by high waves, strong winds and heavy rain, rescue workers and police said. Meanwhile, the DFA through the Philippine Embassy in Bangkok said it is actively monitoring the case after the Royal Thai Police and a group of Filipino tourists notified them of the incident. According to Ambassador to Thailand Mary Jo Bernardo Aragon, the embassy immediately made representations with the Thai police and coordinated with the Filipinos upon receipt of the report. As of now, William, the embassy continues to coordinate with the authorities on the case as well as respond to the needs of the Filipino family and friends of the two missing Filipinos. And that's the latest from Bangkok, Thailand. Back to you, William. Uh, thank you very much. Kat Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. U.S. President Donald Trump said he, the U.S. Navy destroyed an Iranian drone in the Strait of Hormuz. Trump said the USS Boxer amphibious assault ship took defensive action on Thursday after the drone came within about 1,000 yards of the vessel. Iran said it had no information about losing a drone in June. Iran downed a U.S. military drone in the area. Earlier, Tehran said it had seized a foreign tanker and its 12 crew on Sunday for smuggling fuel in the Gulf. Iran has been blamed by the United States for attacks on tankers since May in the world's key shipping area. Tehran denies all the accusations. In other news, angry South Korean consumers are taking action after Tokyo imposed curbs on exports to South Korea, promoting a widespread boycott of Japanese products and services from clothes and travel. Kath Dumaraos explains why. Screenshots of Japan trip cancellations are trending on social media. Lee Sang-won, a 29-year-old designer, and his friends have changed their holiday destination to Taiwan, proudly presented their cancelled ticket to Japan on his social media account. I believe it is very significant for South Korean citizens to show them their thoughts and actions. These boycotts are not about how much economic damage we can inflict but about how can we raise their awareness. Diplomatic tensions have been simmering again since the South Korean court last year ordered Japanese companies to compensate South Koreans who were forced to work during the war. Then, on July 4, Japan restricted exports of high-tech materials to South Korea, denying the move was related to the compensation issue. Tokyo cited inadequate management of sensitive exports, with Japanese media reporting some items ended up in North Korea. Seoul has denied that. 
Economists say the tech export curbs could shave 0.4% off South Korea's gross domestic product this year. The boycott, if it proves to be more than just a brief burst of nationalistic fervor, could marginally add to that unless consumers spend on something else. Park Sol An, an assistant manager at stationery maker Monami, says their online sales have risen fivefold since the curbs. We are pleased to see this has turned consumers' favor towards our pens. Japan's fast retailing fashion brand Uniqlo, which sells clothes worth around 140 billion yen, 6.6% of its revenue, in 186 Korean stores, is also feeling the anger as its chief financial officer said last week there was a certain impact on sales. South Korea's trade ministry urged Japan on Friday to accept its request for another round of talks over Tokyo's tighter export controls. Kat Tumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Boeing is taking a 4.9 billion hit on cover costs related to the worldwide grounding of its 737 MAX aircraft. The charge is set to wipe out profits when the world's biggest plane maker posts quarterly results next week. In a statement, Boeing also said its best estimate at this time is that the aircraft will return to service in the last three months of this year. A 737 MAX crash in Indonesia in October and another in Ethiopia in March killed 346 people in total. Boeing is facing one of the world's worst crises in its history after its best-selling aircraft was grounded worldwide after the said disasters. While music fans might go to Glastonbury or Coachella and movie fans to Toronto or Cannes, the festival of choice for self-professed geeks and nerds is San Diego Comic Con. Beverly Saison tells us why. San Diego Comic Con is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. It started with zero attendees in a basement at the U.S. Grand Hotel in San Diego and has since grown to welcome nearly 150,000 paying guests. The focus of the convention has also changed. What started out as a chance for comic fans to buy and sell issues and to meet the comics creators has become something much bigger and less comic driven. Studios announced their latest sci-fi and fantasy productions in the convention's famous Hall H and stalls, line the inside of the convention center selling fantasy artwork, outfits, and books. stars who made a surprise appearance is Tom Cruise, who introduced the first trailer for the long-awaited sequel to his military action movie. There has also been the growing popularity of cosplay, where fans dress up as their favorite cult character or even branch out to something original. This year, one man dressed up as a hybrid between U.S. President Donald Trump and Darth Vader from Star Wars. Brandishing an orange golf club instead of a lightsaber, he wore a t-shirt that said, Make the Death Star Great Again. Well, there isn't any festival or Comic-Con like San Diego Comic-Con. It's been here for 50 years. It's the 50th anniversary of it. Uh, and unlike other conventions that stay in one convention center, this goes out into the entire area of San Diego. You don't have to have a badge to enjoy yourself. Just come to San Diego and drink it all in. The entire city of San Diego has embraced the event. Posters for upcoming television shows are emblazoned across the walls of hotels around the epicenter and the town's famous trolleys even get wrapped up in fantasy advertising. The historic gas lamp quarter of the town is almost entirely dedicated to the festival. Although most revel in the mount on offer at Comic-Con, others have mixed feelings about the way it has expanded. San Diego Comic-Con continues until Sunday, July 21st. I feel sometimes a little bit disappointed about the fact that um, like I feel like Artist Alley has just kind of shrunk and that's a little bit of a shame. But at the same time, the fact that it has expanded so much means that it's doing really well, which is a really good thing. So, you know, it goes both ways, right? 
Beverly Saison, UNTV News and Rescue, San Diego, USA. Danish toy maker Lego has built a life-size astronaut model to mark the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission launch on July 16, 1969. The group released footage of its master builders hard at work assembling the 6-foot, 3-inch model which is wearing the same spacesuit worn during the moon mission. Over 30,000 Lego bricks were used to build the homage, which even features a reflection in the helmet of the scene on the moon after landing. The piece took nearly 300 hours to complete. The model will be on display at the National Air and Space Museum's Apollo 50 Festival in Washington, D.C. between 1820 July. Wish Covery Season 1 runner-up Kimberly Baluzos Another Step Closer to Stardom begins as she makes her debut performance in the original Filipino musical play Rack of Ages Season 7. Mirasol Abogadil will tell us why. She continues to win audience. She pursues to impress music lovers and listeners. Which Covery Season 1 runner-up Kimberly Baluzo will wow the audience on Saturday, July 20 as she makes her first appearance in the seventh season of Filipino musical play Rock of Ages. Playing the role of Eileen, a girl who dreams of being known in the world of music, Kimberly performs with renowned artists including Noel Cabangon, Randy Santiago, and Bayang Barrios. Grabe, sobrang nakaka-overwhelm na makasama sila and to know their experience experiences dito sa industry and kung paano nila sinishare yun at minomotivate nila ako bilang bago pa lang dito sa industry ito. Kimberly alternates with Asal Santos, Kim Molina, and Shaira Opsima as Eileen in the comedy musical. Rock of Ages is Kimberly's first experience in a musical. Kasi kami yung mga Eileen, Pare-peras naman kami ng script, yung dali na sinasabi, yung mga words na sinasabi, yung kanta, and everything. Pero nagkaka-iba-iba kami, the way we deliver it, and the way we uh, we show it to all of the audience na talaga nanonood. Kimberly promises to captivate the crowd through her singing prowess and promising acting talent. For more details about Rock of Ages, just visit their official social media sites. So sa lahat po na nag-aabang sa akin sa Rock of AG Season 7, it's your time to watch me. At yan po, sana wag niyo pong mamiss ang Season 7 ng Rock of Ages. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this July 19, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Wish ko lang na sasabihin ni Presidente na sa wakas, after three years, Ita champion na niya, itataguyod yung tagumpay natin vis-a-vis uh, -vis China sa West Philippine Sea. Well, his, ano, his uh, priorities for one year, this mm -hmm. very year, and then priorities na for the last, uh, for the second half of his term. Mukhang eh, tama nga naman sila Secretary Panelo dahil eh, minority resolution lang yan. But you know, I am a member of the judiciary. Kailangan pilit kong sabihin, sa ngayon, uh, wala namang kaming nakikitang uh, dapat lamang na manghimasok ng ibang bansa. Hand wash. Pure hand wash. Basura. Mas basura pa yan siguro sa mga sinampang kaso kaysa sa akin. We have nothing to do with that complaint against the VP and other senators. That's basically a complaint of Bicoy, right? test yan ng, papatest ng BPS sa third party testing uh, company, testing lab para may sarili tayong resulta. 
kung, kung sakaling may violation man, makapag-comply sila, makorek nila at makuha natin yung mga substandard products para hindi na mapili ng consumer.